I'm Deb. Hey, and I'm Karen, and we're here answering all your real estate questions with the same thoughtful advice that we would give our friends. Deb, what is today's question? Today's question is, should I buy a house in 2023? This is one of the most common questions I get asked at parties. Like I go to parties, but <laughs> I guess when I'm out, when I'm in front of other people, people say, oh, realtor, should I buy a house in 2023? I hear the market's crashing. That's a whole other video that we'll talk about. But Karen, I know you get asked that question too. So what do you tell people? Well, I do get asked that question at all the parties that we <laughs> attend. Um, definitely buying a house is still a great investment period, regardless of how we feel the market is doing right at this moment, because we know, again, like you said, it's a different, um, another video, but things will get better as far as interest rates are concerned. But when you think about buying a house, um, it stabilizes your payment over the life of the loan. So if you have a fixed mortgage interest rate, fixed rate mortgage, um, your payment's never going to change. That principal and interest will always remain the same versus renting. You know, every time your lease renews, you have that um, probability or likelihood that that rent is going to increase year after year. Yeah, I always think about it. Yeah, everybody's talking right now about the cost of eggs. I saw something this morning where it was a picture of eggs. It cost like $8. And I was like, I don't know where that is. Probably some currency exchange different, you know, whatever. But, you know, it's comforting to me to think I could lock in a cost when everything else in the world is a little bit uncertain and certainly going up in cost. To lock in that housing cost um, is, I think, a really smart thing to consider doing. And knowing that you can always refinance too. So you can always lower your payment, but it's not going to go up in terms of the principal and interest. Exactly. And also over the life of, over the, over the long term, you're going to end up paying less um, in this, in your owning your home versus the whole renting. So right. exactly. that's just exactly. one of the pros. Yeah. Well, one of the ones that I come up with too, and this is because I'm afraid my dogs are about to start barking. I can feel a stirring in the house. So, but it's dogs, it's pets, it's personalizing your home. Um, I, I have so many clients who, say, you know, I'm buying a house and the next thing I'm going to do is get a dog. And, you know, I'm on board with that. I know you are too. But um, just that idea of having a space that you can personalize. And I feel like COVID plays into that a little bit too, because in COVID we were all home. And so you start to look around and your four walls drive you crazy, but also you, you start thinking about what can I do to make my space more comfortable in my own? And when you're renting, you can't really do that. Even simple things like painting, most landlords... Right. I'm a landlord. I don't let you paint. Sorry. Um, but you know, you watch the HGTV and you want to try a project. You can see here the little, uh, is that wa wallpaper, right? That is her yes. shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. She was, she put that up, uh, and you know, being able to do things like that. I'm only showing the good side, by the way. The, it's hard to get those lines lined up. I get it. I get it. So I think that's really a big benefit too, is that if you're working from home, um, you know, creating an environment, it, I, I wouldn't discount that. I right. do think that there's value in that, that might people might kind of poo poo it, but I really think there is value in creating an environment that you feel happy in, whatever that may be for you. I and mean, it's just, probably not classic off white paint like my, my rentals are. Or just like hanging a small shelf. Cause they know some landlords won't even mm -hmm. allow that into the wall. So right. definitely right. making your space feel cozy. Yeah. That's your, yes. that's your sanctuary. Um, I think the other thing too is when you think about investing in a home that is yours, so sorry about, you know, your landlord, but instead of putting money um, towards just something that you don't own, you are establishing equity in your home. And what that means is that over time, when your house is appreciating in value and you are continuously repaying your mortgage, you are building that gap between what you owe and what your home is worth. And so that equity could allow for all kinds of things in the future, whether that is doing a refinance, um, like you mentioned earlier, and removing potential uh, private mortgage insurance or doing home improvements with a refinance, or better yet, moving, taking that equity and moving into your next home, um, whether you're looking to um, increase in size or maybe downsize, depending on where you are in your home buying. 
process. Yeah, I, I think if you were to Google um, home equity and, and building wealth, you'd find tons and tons of sites to talk about how home building is like the key component or home buying, home ownership is the key yeah. component to building long-term wealth. And so for me, it's, um, you know, looking at the future and saying at some point you want to retire and you want to to have some security, um, your home value that you you know have have built is a big part of that. They say, oh, don't treat your home like an investment. I don't know if I agree with that one hundred percent, but you know, but it is part of right. your portfolio, and it, that's important too to start that anytime. Absolutely. And a side. I have note, one. Oh, I was going to say a side note. Yeah. I've heard sometimes where people have done where they do want the equity as a just in case. Maybe they've got some college. Uh, you know, kids going to school and they want to have just that safety net of having some additional money set aside in case of emergencies. So, and especially in Monroe County, where we've never, um, I don't want to say never, but never in my career, right? I've been in real estate 17, 16 years, uh, been through a big recession in 2008, and then, you know, a smaller one, if we want to call that, you know, the kind of end of last year and this year. Um, and we don't see our property values go down. We don't have the wild swings like we see on the East Coast and West Coast. So it's a safe place to park your money, um, you know, as opposed to a single stock buying Coca-Cola stock or something like that that could go way high and could go way low. It's like buying a bond and it's a pretty steady, uh, uh, safer investment. Um, so I, I think, yeah, I think that's an important part to consider. Yeah. Very lucky in our market for sure. Yes. Yeah. So I have one more and this is sort of the I, I'm not going to say I'm an economist geek. What I'm going to say is there is a gentleman named Lawrence Yoon, who is the um, head econ senior economist, head economist king um, of uh, the National Association of Realtors. And he has such a nice way of explaining things to non-economists like myself um, and a lot of eye-opening, uh, you know, like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. And so I'm going to put up a slide to show you. But basically, one of the questions you get or pushbacks you get from people say, I don't know if I should buy a house is because of inflation. And this chart talks about how inflation actually benefits debtors. And I know most of us don't want to have debt. I know y'all live to listen to Dave Ramsey and debt is bad, but you know, there are certain kinds of debt that just sort of are to be expected. And I don't think you should beat yourself up over. And Dave Ramsey does too. You can have a mortgage. He's all right with that. But the way that this chart works, it's showing that again, going back to our first point, you, you have that steady payment, right? So in this case, fifteen eighty a month, we're making the assumption it's like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage, six and a half percent. You're paying fifteen eighty a month on your principal and your interest. And if your uh, annual salary is in this case like six thousand and some change, that's going to increase each year. Um, one would hope. I think that's what we all, you know, want to think that we're going to make more money, but inflation, it tends to um, increase salaries um, because employers are needing to keep up. And so in this example, the first year, 24% of your monthly income is going towards your mortgage payment. But by, by the end of year eight or so, you're down to 18.7%. So it's a smaller portion of your take-home pay. So it's actually decreasing your debt load. Yeah. And I do want to just make a quick clarification because I knew what you were speaking towards or uh, speaking about. But when you mentioned the 6,000, that is on a monthly versus yeah. an annual. And, so and, and it's net. No, it's gross. Sorry. See, yeah. I'm not an economist. Yeah. Well, I was going to say we work in gross figures or gross income. So yeah. yeah. And but if you want to see Lord Yoon actually explain this chart and it'll make a lot more sense, I can send you the link to it or I can, I can probably figure out how to link it below. That's what they always say on YouTube, right? We'll link it below. I don't know how to do that, but we'll figure, we'll figure it out. It out. Yeah. Um, so I just for people who like what numbers or like charts, cause I know some people really like that. Yeah. Um, you know, there is some rationale to buy now rather than delaying and how it's going to kind of start that ball rolling. Like Dave Ramsey says, snowball effect. It's all good. So um, I do want to say, Karen, and I know you probably will add this disclaimer in too before we end this, that everybody's situation is different. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of giving you the general advice I would give you know, if I were giving a, a, a talk or something like that to a group of people, 
But I would strongly encourage anyone who's thinking about buying to contact their realtor and their lender. If you're local to our area, please contact us um, and talk about your specific situation. Because honestly, if you're moving in two years, I'm going to be like, yeah, I probably wouldn't do it. If you're moving in four years, you know, I would give it consideration. If your job isn't stable, you know, we talked about like these numbers work great if your income's going up. 3%, so not going up a lot, but going up a little bit every year. But if you're thinking about quitting your job or making a major career change, Karen, what would you say as a lender? Um, I would say, let's, let's pause. Let's not <laughs> even, don't, do not get yourself tied into a mortgage period. Right. Exactly. And you know, that just happened yesterday, like true story, met with a first time buyer who was just interested in learning more about what programs were available and come to find out they may not be here in a year. And on top of it, once they saw the payments and the interest rates and all of that, it didn't make sense for this person at this time. And that's why I said, it, it's just, it doesn't make any sense for you to be buying right now. If you're still here in a year or so, let's revisit. Yeah, cool. All right, so that is it for this episode of Should I Buy a House in 2023? We will be back with a lot more. You trust your best friend to give you good advice. So consider us your best friends in real estate. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.